great people out there. This is once again Kevin from CC Pipe, where we focus on productivity and pipeline for creatives. Today's topic is pre-flights, and this will be a two-parter, and in part one, we'll look at InDesign's pre-flight. That said, let's jump straight into it. First things first, what are pre-flights then? Well, they are basically presets you run to check your document or PDF to prove technical things like resolution, links, colors, and so forth. But it's really a lot easier just to show it. First though, why should you bother in the first place? Well, having a pre-flight to run means that you don't need to manually check the technical aspects of your project before sending it to print. It is mostly a printing thing, I guess, but I'm sure you could find use of it regardless. How you use it will probably depend on what you work with. Say you work in pre-press, you might benefit from being a real power user. As you will see though, if you used InDesign before, you probably utilize the default pre-flight there, perhaps even without knowing it. Enough talk, and let's jump over to InDesign. Here we are once again in InDesign. Over here, we can see that it tells us that our document has no errors and it shows a green light as well. If we double click here, we'll find ourselves in the pre-flight panel. Here, we obviously see our errors and uh, we can turn it on or off here. And in this list, we can switch pre-flight profiles. As you can see, we now use the basic one. However, if we go to options here and uh, choose define profiles, we get to set up our own pre-flight. Now, I won't go over every item in here, but they are quite self-explanatory, I think. But in short, how you do this, you click on the plus right here to create a new profile, then just name it, and uh, let's just call it test, I guess. And uh, now we check the options we want. And of course, we can expand these categories then to reveal all the options. If you are interested in all the options in here, I'd just say, take a few moments and scroll through it. And uh, when we are done, we just press OK. Then we should be able to find it in the list over here. Yeah. Now, if we go over to my prepare document over here, we can see already that there's one error. We have a link missing, quite common. That's using default pre-flight, however. If we now switch over to my custom profile, we see that we have quite a few more problems in here. So let's just go through them. Okay, so first we have a missing link. That's easy, I'll just relink the file. I have it over here in Bridge, so let me just switch over and uh, then we just drag it in and uh, there we go. Okay, next. Let's see, it says that we have an incorrect amount of spot colors. Oh, well I have used spot and not process colors for this document and I have set it up to allow zero spot colors. Well, we can fix that by double clicking the swatch and just switching it over to process. Something like this. Next, image resolution. Ah, well, we seem to be using an image lower than 300 DPI, which is what I set as the minimum. Let's just find the correct file then. So let's relink it. Just right click here and we need to find a folder. Not overly exciting stuff this. And uh, then we just replace it with a high res file. There. Next. Okay, we seem to have non-proportional scaling. If we double click, it shows us the object. Okay, this one seems to be wrongly scaled by mistake. That's an easy fix. There we go. Just constrain to the box with Control Shift E. Next, we appear to have type that is too small. Yeah, sometimes you forget that your text needs to be readable once printed. So I have set it up here to warn me if it goes too low. We'll just scale it up a bit then. Just go into paragraph styles and uh, edit, basic, and just increase it a step. There we go. Lastly, it says that a page is a different size than what I have set in the pre-flight. Let's check, shift P and uh, click on the artboard. Yes, it has been scaled by mistake. Let's just correct that as well. Okay, and that was our last error. Now we have a green light to export this to print. Just as a note, by the way, this can slow down your document a bit, depending on the size, of course. So if it starts to slow things down, maybe toggle it off with the checkbox here when you don't need it. And that's it for part one. Hope you got an insight into what InDesign's pre-flight can do for you. In part two, we'll continue with pre-flights for PDFs in Acrobat. And over there, the options are almost endless. We'll see how in-depth I end up going with it. Thank you so much for watching and make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. It helps me out a lot. And also, if you have any productivity questions or suggestions for future videos, make sure to throw those in the comments below. Once again, thank you and until next time, have a good one.